during the evening. The ladies' event, we're going to start right at the beginning with heat number one. The ladies' event designated as 500 meters. Just one event per sex here. 500 for the ladies, 1,000 for the men. And this is the first heat for the Netherlands. Amy van Kotsveld van Anker, Sohee Kim from Korea, and Yanmei Zhang from China. And straight away in front. There was a real battle there, and the Netherlands girl has gone over. And so he Kim has the lead. The other two just got their skates interlocked, and down they went. The Dutch girl Van Kotsveld van Enkeer and Yanmei Zhang, and that leads so he Kim right out in front. Still one more can qualify. Not seeing any pictures of that at the moment, but uh, an easy ride here for So Hee Kim. Four and a half laps of the track, and no trouble at all for her. Just a 15-year-old from Daukusiti. And she couldn't have believed how easy that was. Well, dreadful mistake from Yan Mi as she came round that bend. She completely lost her balance. Her weight went back, and uh, she took out the Dutch girl and uh, very disappointing for her. But uh, we'll have to see what the judges decide on that because uh, it was Yan Mi's fault. There's no doubt about that. We hope to get a replay on that, but so it did look that way. Let's have a look at it now. Yan Mi Zhang just moving out there. And yes, you're absolutely right. Just took Van Ankeri's legs from under her. And what a chance that was for So Hee Kim, who looked as if she might struggle in that event, but qualifies without any problem. And it means that Van Ankeri goes as well. She goes through, and Yan Mei Zhang is disqualified. On to heat number two there. There's Sylvie Daigle, the world silver medalist, five-time world champion, red-hot favorite for this particular heat. Number 54, Kathy Turner from the USA on the inside. On the outside, Lei Kyung Chung from Korea. This is going to be very tough, and Daigle already in a bit of trouble there. And the American takes the lead, Kathy Turner. Tenth in the world last year. Daigle, runner-up in the world championships in second place. And Lee Kyung Chun of Korea third. Two qualify, remember. Two laps to go. And it looks pretty comfortable for Kathy Turner. Now, Daigle should start now to really let the others know that she's there. But she's just not motoring at the moment. And Kathy Turner moving further and further in front. Some seven, eight metres in front now. And Daigle's been dropped to third place. Now, this will be a major surprise if she doesn't qualify. Into the last lap. Kathy Turner first, and Daigle really struggling behind her. And she's not going to qualify. Lee Kyung Chun of Korea takes second place. And the five-time world champion, the world silver medalist in Sydney, is out in the heats. And complains to her friends, something wrong with the skates. There was something definitely wrong. Well, certainly looked as though she was struggling, struggling with the outside edge on her left skate. She didn't have the grip on the corners and therefore couldn't accelerate to try and get past Kathy Turner. Now, Turner was brilliant at the start of the race. You can see here, she sprinted from the line, fought to get inside, desperately trying to keep inside those markers. And obviously, her plan was to lead from the start, try and keep out of trouble. Desperate scramble at the start of the race, look. And Turner does what she set out to do. She was lucky that Daigle didn't go over there because she was really using her arms and elbows, but nothing happened. I think if Daigle had gone over, well, the race would have been restarted. On now to heat number six, and straight away into the lead, Karine Rubini from France. Rubini from France, 21-year-old from Montreux. In second place, Oxil Huang from Korea. But that's a terrific start from the French girl. And 9,000 Peter here in the Alder Glass really roaring her on. Well, we saw two go down there at the start. They've got back up and into the race. Yes, down went Amy Peterson of the USA and Simone Velzebor, one of the favorites from Holland. But no trouble at all for these two. They can just coast home. No heroics needed here. Oxil Huang leads home. 
and Rubini coasts home in second place. And another surprise there. And that shows you how difficult it is. We saw Wilf O'Reilly qualifying early on, but the red-hot favorite in the ladies' event, Sylvie Daigle, fails to make it in the previous heat. And there, another fancied competitor, Simone Velzebour. Fails as well. So through Rubini and Huang. Well, it really is crucial to get a good start and try and keep yourself out of trouble because it's so tight. You can see here from our overhead camera that they're so packed together. One skater goes down and the whole field could go. Disaster there. Ready to get to go to the heat box. And you can see Amy Peterson struggling to carry on and managed to do so for some time and then finally went over. Again, very quickly into a stride, but taken out there. Still battles on, but in the end, into the barrier she goes. Well, you can see here, Australia. Phil Zaboa just lose her balance there. And she goes straight into poor old Amy Peterson. She struggles to get back up into the race, but uh, the blade's just not able to grip onto the ice. So that's the confirmation. Huang and Rubini through from heat number six. Now to heat number eight, another tight race. And into the lead, number 20, Aulia Vlasova from the United team. 45 in second place, Monique Velzebor from the Netherlands, girlfriend of Wilf O'Reilly. And joint fourth in the 91 Worlds. Also here, number 49 from North Korea, Chun Kwa Kim, the 18-year-old from Pyongyang. And it looks like the two in front are through now. Velzebor. Started the race's favorite. Fourth in Sydney in the World Championships. And she and Vlasova have an easy task here. Vlasova leads as they go through to the last half lap. Vlasova second and Chun Kwak in the 18-year-old who lost her footing a lap into the race fails and she will not make it through to the last eight. Well, very disappointing for Kim. After a lap and a half, she completely lost the balance and uh, from then on really wasn't in the race at all. So that's the end of the ladies' event. And the big shock is that in heat number two, Sylvie Daigle fails to make the final eight who will compete on Saturday. So we're going to take a break now. There'll be more speed skating from Albeville between the second and third periods in the hockey. Rejoin us then. Welcome to the Alder Glass here in Albeville and the first of eight heats in the men's event 1000 meters that's the designated distance here just one event in the men's plus the relay the women go in 500 plus the relay here we go then for the first heat Chris Nicholson goes on the inside for New Zealand the favorite number 14 Michelle Dagno from Canada the 1987 world champion also in Tibor Kunbalin from Hungary wearing 31 and Hugo Hernhoff of Italy number 35 who leads at the moment so it's Hernhoff first Danio second Nicholson third and Kumbalin fourth but it changes so quickly nine laps of the track 111 meters and that's Nicholson the 24 year old from New Zealand takes the lead. Danio is the man to watch. He was 10th in the pre-Olympic tournament, 25 years old now, but still a very seasoned campaigner. Hugo Herrhoff from Italy in third place. And Cumberland struggling. Two to qualify, it's getting really tough up front. Nicholson has the lead. Herrhoff and Danio now struggling a little in third place. Got to be careful. Makes his move on the inside and takes Nicholson. So Danio moves into second. 
Hanhoff leads. Kunbalint is out of it. It's between these three. One and a half laps to go. Daniel moves into second. Nicholson third. And Nicholson now somehow has to get past Daniel. Daniel leads. And Daniel crosses the line first. Hanhoff second. And Nicholson, I'm afraid, just misses out. So warm applause for this very popular skater. Runner-up in 1990 in Worlds, champion in 87, and now through to the quarterfinals. Well, that was a shame for Nicholson. He did, did everything right in the race, right up to the second to last lap. Just got pipped by Dunholt. And uh, he was completely blocked as he came around the final bend there. Canadian and Italian right in front of him. He got nowhere to go. On to heat number two then. Satomo Kawasaki from Japan, fifth in the World Championships. He wears number 41. And a dicey start there, but for Britain, watch out for Nikki Gooch, number 27, member of a team that won the bronze medal in the World Championships in Sydney last March. Out in front, Gilles Elberbakken from Norway. So it's Norway first. In second place, Frederick Blackburn from Canada. Elberbakken first, Blackburn second, Nikki Gooch third, Kawasaki the favourite. Fifth in the World Championships, 22 years old, from Ibaraki. And Gooch has been in terrific form. Biding his time at the moment, slow pace. That's right, this race has started at a much slower pace than some of the races we've seen, and that's good. It gives the skaters a chance to settle down, feel the ice, but the pace stepping up now. Hilberbakken leads. Blackburn threatening. Gooch third, and he took a stumble there. He's got to be careful. And they're really holding it up now. This is where it matters, and Gooch is taking... Does well there to take Elba Barkham, but over he goes and Gooch is out. Gooch will not make the quarterfinal, and suddenly it's completely changed. Kawasaki goes out in front, Blackburn second, and they've quickly dropped Elba Barkham, and Gooch is still to get up. Terrible time for him. So he won't make the quarterfinals, but he'll be in the relay later on. And Britain have a good chance there. So these two can just coast round, and they do. Frederick Blackburn wins for Canada. Second, Sutomo Kawasaki from Japan. And Gilles Elberbakken way back in third place. He fails to qualify, as I'm afraid does Nicky Gooch. Well, that was a real shame for Nicky Gooch. Doing so well, kept with the pace. They just speed it up slightly. He nearly lost it on one lap and then unable to keep his balance. Remember, the corners get really torn up, and it gets very, very difficult for these skaters to keep a firm hold on the ice. Heat seven. Number 43 at the back there, the world silver medalist. Watch out for him, Ki Hoon Kim. And he probably is the biggest threat to Wilf O'Reilly in this competition. O'Reilly's avoided him, goes in heat five. In the lead at the moment, Tatsuyoshi Isihara from Japan. Andrew Murta from Australia, second. But at the moment, Kim biding his time. 24 years old from Seoul. And at, like O'Reilly, when he pushes the accelerator, suddenly gaps open up where there didn't seem to be any. Just like there, three meters quickly takes it, then relaxes in front. But dominating this race, Ki Hoon Kim leads in second place, Tatsuyoshi Isihara. And Murta, the 26-year-old from Parramatta in Australia, in third. And doing well to stay with these two. Isihara in second place, ninth in the world in Sydney. So this is a real struggle for Murta. But it's great to watch Kim here. So smooth around the bends. Great knee bend, really getting low, leaning into the corners. These, get, these guys lean over at an angle of about 40 degrees. So the blades, you can imagine, are very, very sharp. And it really turns it on as he comes out of the corner. That's the three or four steps that open the gap up, and that's what he's done again. Now four or five metres instantly. Isihara second, and in those last couple of laps, they quickly drop Murta. So an easy win there. And there you can see the amount 
that Wilf O'Reilly has to contend with there in Ki-Hoon Kim, a really formidable customer he is. The world silver medalist, he wins, Isihara second, Murta fails to qualify. Well, Kim really orchestrated that race in control right from the start. Tremendous performance and looking forward to the uh, confrontation with Wilf O'Reilly. Heat number eight. And into the lead goes Orazio Fagoni from Italy, 23-year-old from Milan. In second place, Marc Bella from France and almighty roar went up when his name was announced. Number seven, Alan de Reuter from Belgium. And Mike McMillan from New Zealand at the back at the moment. Watch out for him. Tenth in the Worlds in Sydney. And moving up through now, but it's Marc Bella who leads from France, but then quickly overtaken by Fagoni. Fagoni leads four or five metres in front now. And here comes McMillan. 27 years old and skating better than ever at the moment, taking it wide on the outside. Still has some work to do here. But away he goes. McMillan leads in second place, Fagoni. Can Bella make it in third? Two laps to go. And McMillan looks certain to qualify, barring a nightmare fall. And the crowd screaming for Bella to make it up. And here he comes. Bella takes second. One lap to go. Can the Frenchman make it? Mark Bella in second place. Fagoni third. A comfortable win for McMillan. And it looked like De Reuter just got up. The Frenchman stood up too early, and De Reuter made it for Belgium. So McMillan and De Reuter are through. Hope you enjoyed the short track from Albeville. <laughs> Heats the 1,000 metres. At stake, a place in Thursday's quarterfinals. Matt Jasper is Britain's other medal hope. David Coleman is the commentator. Oh, O'Reilly got a brilliant start there. He left them for dead. He's gone right away from them. They're taken completely by surprise. The Korean now in second place. Song has started the chase, but already Lie of China is in some trouble. O'Reilly's not really taken too much advantage of that. He started so quickly. He's a very good starter indeed. Relax, not taking too much out of himself. He's also got a very good change of speed. So, the Korean and the Chinese back in contention. O'Reilly's so relaxed. There's the attack now, just speed it up slightly, four laps to go. The Korean went with him. Song. Again, yeah, no, speed it up on the bend, but glides down the straight. Really made an effort to get away. Song in second place, Lai is third. Two laps to go. O'Reilly starting to wind it up. Some bumping behind him, the Chinese got squeezed out. This time they hear the bell and it's O'Reilly leading. Song in second place. O'Reilly out of trouble in front. Trying to not to let a gap appear on the inside. He succeeded. And quite a finish there. 137.36 for O'Reilly. Led all the way. Just did what he had to do and no more. This time they get away. 56 in the lead straight away is Lai of uh, Northern Korea. Jasper in second place. Going up on the outside and coming around is Kawhi of Japan. Warring number 40. Kawhi leads. Lion second place. Jasper is third. And Erchev of the unified team in fourth place. And there goes Erchev a bit early this time. He's gone from last to first. Erchev leads. 
The Y sell in second place for Japan. Third is Lai of Korea. And on the outside, coming right through, trying to get a better position is Jasper. There's a lot of uh, boxing going on there, and nearly a bump. And number 40 got taken out. That was Kawhi of Japan. Lost a lot of ground. Five laps left. Leader, air chop, Soviet Union. Jasper for Great Britain in second place. Lai is third for North Korea. Still trying to make up ground is Kawhi. Atchoff leads, Jasper in second place, looking comfortable. Right behind him is Lai of Korea. Three laps to go, and Jasper goes into the lead. He found a gap on the inside, and he's gone for it. Lai in second place, Atchoff, United team in third place. The three clear of the Japanese, who's given up practically. And now it's Jasper and Lai. Just breaking clear of Atchoff as they come round to the bell. And Jasper, 19 years old, going for it hard. And they've got right away from their job. Jasper leads for Great Britain. In second place, Lyon, the People's Republic of Korea. They qualify. The time, 136.86. So Matt Jasper and Wilf O'Reilly safely through to Thursday's quarterfinals. Now, two world records were also broken in tonight's short track speed skating. In the women's 500 metres, Italy's Marinella Canclini set a time of 47 seconds dead. And in the men's 5,000 metres relay, South Korea not eight seconds off the previous best. Well, now, the whole of Italy will have come to a standstill today to watch their national hero in action. Alberto Tomba... A world record for Marinella. Campolini. Although this has to be checked with a lap to go. There's still some dispute uh, in Albaville this evening as to whether this uh, world record will count. 47.02, a provisional world record, we shall say. As we now take a look at uh, Korea, who have got a world record in uh, beating. Australia in the team event. The old world record set by Holland, 722.12. Well, that's been smashed this evening by Korea in a magnificent event for them. Their finishing time, 7.14.07. Oh, 10.14.07 oh, is the official time given. A world record by six seconds. Alberto Tomba. For the first time ever, short track is a medal sport here in the Olympics, an exhibition sport in 1988 in Calgary, but now medals at stake. And today we're going to show you the heats of the men's 1000, the ladies 500, and eight heats in each. The first two will qualify for the quarterfinals on Thursday. And there, the first set of men getting ready for heat one. Chris Nicholson goes for New Zealand. He'll be wearing helmet number 53. Michel Danio from Canada, wearing helmet number 14. Tibor Kunbelint from Hungary, number 31. And Hugo Henhoff from Italy, number 35. Chris Howarth alongside me. And in heat number six, we have Wilf O'Reilly, for those of you watching back in Great Britain, who is the favorite and who won, of course, the short Randy. track in Calgary when it wasn't a medal sport. So away we go. And straight away into the lead, number 35, Hugo Hanhoff from Italy. Chris Nicholson, number 53, in third place. Michel Dagno is the man to watch, number 14, 25 years old, one of the most experienced campaigners, tucked in there in second place from Montreal, world champion in 87, runner-up in 1990, and it's Danio who takes the lead. Nine laps there'll be, 111 meters in this short track, and as you can see, a very tactical race. All of them will be. One mistake will be absolutely crucial here. You have to watch the pace, watch the moves all the way through. Constant chopping and changing for the lead, very much cat and mouse, and Danio and Nicholson taking it up at the moment. Nicholson, number 53 for New Zealand, 24-year-old. Born in London. Danio second. In third place for Italy, Hugo Hanhoff, seventh in the World Championships last year. And he moves up. So Hanhoff takes the lead. 
Nicholson second. Daniel always alert for the danger. Moves up into second. Must never be caught napping here. One split second lack of concentration and you're out. So one lap to go and it's looking bad at the moment for Nicholson in third place. The first two qualify for the quarterfinals. So at the bell it's Hanhoff. Daniel looking for a move. Nicholson right behind. Half a lap to go. And Daniel takes it. Now can Nicholson come on the inside? Stretches forward, but he's not able to make it. Daniel first. Hanhoff second. And Kunbalint and Nicholson miss out. Well, the thing to watch in this short track speed skating is these guys have such an incredible turn of speed. In one split second, they can move up two or three paces. But the danger is, with one lap to go, being blocked by the two people in front of you. And that's what happened to uh, Nicholson from New Zealand there, blocked by Hern Hernhoff and Daniel. So in heat two, Kawasaki goes from Japan. Sudutomo Kawasaki, Gilles Elverbakken from Norway, Nikki Gooch for Great Britain wearing number 27, and Frederick Blackburn for Canada. Gucci on the outside, a tough heat, this one. Kawasaki wearing number 41 at the back there is the man who is the favorite here. Fifth in the World Championships in Sydney, 22 years old, from Ibaraki, biding his time. Leader then from Norway, Gilles Elverbakken. Gucci in third place. Well, you can see the Norwegian Elverbakken really orchestrating this race. Started off at a much, much slower pace, and they're really playing a cat and mouse game here. Frederick Blackburn, 19 year old from Shikatumi in Canada, in second place. Gooch is third. Nicky Gooch, member of the team, the British team that won bronze medal in the World Championships in Sydney last March. Just 19 years old from Roehampton, but a very promising skater indeed. Pace beginning to warm up, and Gooch alert to the increase in pace there. Slightly dips once more, but it's all the time. It's beginning to increase, and he nearly lost his footing there. He's got to be careful, and they've opened up a gap, but he closes it quickly. Gooch into second place then. But he's lost it again at the same place, and out he goes. So Gooch goes out, and Blackburn has a convincing lead now. Kawasaki moves into second, Elberbach and third, and that's the way it should stay. So what a disappointment for Nicky Gooch. Blackburn takes the bell just in front. Kawasaki closes up behind, but the two of them are safely through. No problems here. They'll just coast by and they qualify. Blackburn first, Kawasaki second. Well, that's a real disappointment for poor Nicky Gooch. Overbacken really orchestrated the first part of the race with four laps to go. The pace increased, and there you can see Gooch as he tried to accelerate around the corner, just losing grip. The corners here get really, really cut up. And uh, as this heat continues and we have more and more races, that problem's going to get worse and worse for the skaters to come. So Blackburn for Canada, Kawasaki for Japan are the two qualifiers from heat number two. On to heat number three then, Etchoff, Dimitri Etchoff from the United Team, Wonho Lee from North Korea, Matthew Jasper for Great Britain, and Toshinobu Kawai from Japan. Jasper, second in the 1,000 metres in Sydney in the Worlds, the favourite in this race. But straight away taking it up is Number 40, Kawai for Japan. Then Won Ho Lee. Jasper at the back, but watching for any move up front. And moves up now to take second place. It's the acceleration off the bend where the injection of pace really begins. Just here, and you can see the two of them just beginning to lose the couple behind. So it's Erchoff from the United team in the lead. Dimitri Erchoff, 21 years old from Dorky. Then it's Jasper in second place. In third place, Won Ho Lee. Well, Jasper at the moment in a dangerous situation. Lee right behind him. And he's just got to make sure that he keeps himself out of trouble and keeps right up behind Erkov. And here's the move. Jasper just taking the lead here. With two laps to go, Jasper leads from Lee. Jasper, Lee, and Erchoff, and Kaiwai really struggling at the back. These three will fight out for the first two places. Jasper in the lead then. Coming round with just over a lap to go. Jasper first. And Lee trying to take him on the inside. 
Jasper, no problem. Qualifies first. One holy second. And in third place, Dmitry Echov from the United team. But as you can see there, disqualification early on. One holy taking the ground of one of the other skaters. So it's Echov who qualifies in second place. So Echov and Jasper through from that heat. On to heat number four. Geert Blanchard goes for Belgium. He'll be wearing number six, helmet number six. Mark Velzeboer from the Netherlands, 48. And in yellow there for Australia, Richard Nizilski, number five. This should be a hot heat. And the favorite is Blanchard. There he is, Geert Blanchard, joint bronze medalist in the Olympic, in the World Championships in Sydney. 25 years old from Leuven. So it's Blanchard in the lead. Velzeboer from the Netherlands, 23 years old from Alkemaard in second place. And Nierzilski in third, 23 years old from Nottingham. And you can see Blanchard controlling the race as uh, Velzeboer just goes into the lead. But uh, still nobody prepared to take this race on. Remember, two qualify for the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals on Thursday. Well, the pace has increased now with four laps to go. Velzebor takes it up, and it's really hotted up. Yes, with three to go now, Velzebor takes the lead. On the inside comes Blanchard. There he makes his move, and you can see in three or four strides. He looks as if he was beginning to dominate the race, but there's still all three of them grouped together, and Nizelski has still got a chance battling away on the inside, but he won't let him through, Velzebor. It's still Blanchard first, Velzebor second, and Nizelski in third place, struggling now as they hit the bell. And Blanchard looks to have this race pretty well in his pocket, and now struggles, though. But they're blocking Nizelski. Blanchard again makes his move. Takes it first. Game effort from Nizilski on the inside, but I think he just failed, and Velzebor just held him off. But it's the front of the skate that counts. That's right. You can see there the uh, Australian diving for the line, but doesn't quite make it. Well, he didn't take advantage of Velzebor's mistake early on in the race. So those are two qualifiers. You'll be back for Heat 5 right after this break. <laughs> Halfway through the heats for the men's event. There's heat number five, and it should be the hottest heat so far. Mark Lackey from Canada, Andy Gable, USA, and Yunho Lee from Korea. And Yunho Lee, the favorite, number 45 in the middle there, joint bronze medalist in the Worlds in Sydney, but really tough. Andy Gable, second in a pre-Olympic tournament in Albeville. Here wears number 57 on the inside. And Mark Lackey, eighth in the Worlds, wears number 16 for Canada so straight away tremendous respect these three have for each other and so it's rather like cycling at the moment you can see there Gable just keeping his eye on the guys behind him as Lackey comes in is he going to take up the race no Gable still just in front but keeping a firm eye on the two guys behind him Gable probably goes into this as the outsider of the three although he showed outstanding form in the pre-Olympic tournament here in Albeville in November. So it's Gable leads for USA. Lackey tucked in second place and Yun Ho Lee still to make his move. Watching the others like a hawk. Injection of pace here, but Yun Ho Lee able to go with it. So now it's Lackey. And here comes the Korean on the inside. And this is going to be tough for Gable from here. Lackey takes the lead. Yun Ho Lee in second place, and Gable struggling to stay with him. Two laps to go. And he's done well, Gable, to try and make the effort. But the Korean just nips in there. Very close. It was nearly all over then. Well, that's right. There was very little room there. And uh, good courage from the Korean Lee. But Lackey back into the front again. And Gable struggling at the back with one lap to go. So Lackey and Yun Ho Lee look as if they've got it. Gable making a desperate bid, but forces himself a little wide and gives it up right at the end. Just outclassed, a game effort from him, but I'm afraid he won't go through to the quarterfinals. Mark Lackey goes through as the winner 
of heat number five, and he's joined by Yun Ho Lee. And here's the key moment. Well, Gable really trying to get up on the inside, but Lee just sneaking through between Lackey and Gable, and really there's no room there at all. But uh, Gable losing his stride there and nearly went. And Gable, in the end, as you can see, disqualified. But uh, it must have been a difficult decision for the judges. And Yunho Lee perhaps a little lucky to survive. Now, big moment for Great Britain here. Wilf O'Reilly, you saw a shot of him there. The man who won two gold medals at Calgary when this was a demonstration sport. But now this is the real nitty gritty. We're going for medals here and a real sense of nervousness in the British camp as O'Reilly takes his place. Master tactician, but as you can see early on, one little mistake and it could be all over. And it needn't necessarily be his mistake. But O'Reilly decides to dominate this from the front. Number 47 in second place, Yai Kun Song, won the pre-Olympic tournament in Albeville, and Lian Li in third place, a rather unknown junior from China, 17 years old from Yilin, and he goes into this as the outsider. So it's O'Reilly looking comfortable and relaxed, always looks relaxed as Wilf. That's right, Wilf is a master tactician, and you can see his strategy for this race goes straight out in front and keep out of trouble so dangerous in one split second it can all be over great believer in the power of positive thinking is wilf and he's gone into this totally relaxed said the others are shooting for me and he said if i do my best i'm good enough to win given a little bit of luck and he is very much the man to beat you can see how he injects the pace just after the corner and again there Yai Kun Song going with him, and this is going to be tough for Lian Lee. And already you can see he's really battling to stay with the pace. O'Reilly turning it on. And the two of them always, just after the corners, just getting that two or three meter gap away from Lian Lee. O'Reilly from Yai Kun Song. One and a half laps to go. Lee trying to get on the inside, and again, Song closes the gap. At the bell, O'Reilly, Song, Lee in third. Now they're beginning to form a wall against him. It's going to be very difficult for him to get by. But he makes his move on the inside. O'Reilly gets there. Now does Lee get up to take second? It's very close indeed. Remember, it's the front of the skate that counts. Well, that was a courageous dive for the line from Lee. And look at that. He gets second place. Although his body wasn't over the line first, he got the front of the skate there. And he goes through. So Lee goes through with O'Reilly. And Yai Kun Song. The man who won the pre-Olympic tournament out doesn't even make the quarterfinals. That's a major shock. Now to heat number seven. And Yi Hun Kim, number 43. Andrew Murta from Australia on the inside, number four. And Tatsuyoshi Isihara from Japan, number 39. And it's Murta in the lead. Now Yi Ki Hun Kim, who's at the back now, is regarded as Wilf O'Reilly's major threat to win the gold medal here. Very fast indeed. Silver medalist in the World Championships behind O'Reilly in Sydney in March. So watch out for him at the back, number 43. Again, a master tactician, but superb change of pace. And that's what has brought him so many rewards. So it's Ishihara in the lead. Murta on the outside, but here comes Kim, and straight away, you can see there, it looked effortless, but suddenly he opens up a gap. That's right, he did the sensible thing, just injected the pace, went round the outside of the other two skaters, and kept himself well out of any trouble. And I fancy it'll be difficult for them to pass him now. He's made up his mind that at the front is where he needs to be, out of danger, and looking very relaxed, very aware, the antennae really working well. Have to be aware of the other's thoughts almost before they make them. And he's doing that. Just doing enough to stay in front. And he's making Murta there struggle. Murta struggling to stay with the pace. Ishihara's going with him okay. Two laps to go. It looks bad for the Australian at the moment. And he looks like he's being dropped. This is a comfortable win for ki -hun Kim. Ishihara with him at the bell. I'm afraid Murta really struggling. So here he is then, the 24-year-old from Seoul. And O'Reilly will look at this, and uh, he'll know what to have expected. And it won't have done him a lot of good, but Wilf doesn't really worry too much about the opposition as long as he's getting well. Kim through with Ishihara. Well, that was an impressive race from Kim. You could see him really inject the pace coming out of the bend. He almost bounced out of the corner, and he was getting a couple of meters on uh, the Japanese guy Ishihara, who came second and went through with him. On then to the final heat, four in this one, McMillan, Mike McMillan from New Zealand, Mark Bella for France, Alain de Reuter from Belgium, and Orazia Fagoni for Italy. Ready. 
So Macmillan on the outside for New Zealand. Goes in this as the favourite, 10th in the world last year. Come on, come on. See the skaters being pulled back to the start again. It's very important that the skaters stay absolutely still. They mustn't move before that gun goes off. And a big cheer as Bella for France makes his move. The only French skater in the men's event, number 19. Alan de Reuter, number seven for Belgium. And in the lead there, Orazio Fagoni for Italy. So it's Fagoni in the lead. But tremendous cheers for Bella to see if he can make it through to the quarterfinals. De Reuter leads. And they're really bunching. Interesting to see Macmillan, the New Zealander, just staying out of trouble at the back there and wait for him to make his move. The lead changing almost every corner, but Fagoni makes the move there. Bella goes with him. Out on the outside is Macmillan. De Reuter at the back now. Fagoni looks at the outside and sees this time it's Macmillan go with him. Macmillan and Fagoni. Bella in third. Halfway stage. Macmillan looks really good. Well, he almost casually strolled past the opposition there. Macmillan injecting the pace and Fagoni trying to get up and get back in contention. So there's a battle now for second place. Macmillan looks comfortable. Two laps to go. Fagoni looking tired. Now, can Bella get up there? Bella taking on the inside. Bella looks as if he can make second. Macmillan first, Bella second as they go for the bell. McMillan's through all right, the real battle on for second, and Bella has the place at the moment. Bella second, here comes Vagoni, and Bella looked up too early, and I'm afraid he didn't make it. So there are the qualifiers for the quarterfinal. Danio for Canada, Hernhoff for Italy, Blackburn, Canada, Kawasaki, Japan, and further down, good to see that Wilf O'Reilly is through as well as Matt Jasper. So two through out of three, and Nicky Gooch will have a chance of glory later on in the week with the relay. So the men's event over. Those are the quarter finalists. You'll be back with the women right after this break. The women's event, same format. Heats now. First two go through to the quarterfinals. And they're on Saturday. 500 meters, though, four and a half laps at the track. So this really is a pure sprint. So straight away. We have Sohee Kim from Korea. And a real mistake there. Well, that's disastrous for uh, Van Ankerberg. We've got to see who gets up, because remember, two go through. Kim there taking out the Dutch skater. Yes, Yan Mi Zhang looked as if she might have been the one to blame there, but straight away, Sohi Kim, who looked as if she didn't have a really tough skate, came through without any problems at all. And she is a really lucky girl as she coasts through at the end here. But uh, Van Kutzvold, Van Ankeri, here we can see it. There you can see it. It looked like the Chinese girl just took her out. That's right. She lost her footing, and that was a, a real shame for the Dutch girl. You can see there, look, certainly that uh, Zhang from China trying to get up through the inside there, and really there was no room. She completely lost her balance and look, gets disqualified. And uh, Joel van Katzveld van Ankeri taking her place. So disqualification for Zhang. So now heat number two. Kathy Turner goes for the USA. Sylvie Daigle, the red hot favorite here to win the ladies' event. She's number six for Canada in the middle there. And on the inside, Lee Kyung Chun from Korea. 16-year-old who comes into this race with a pretty fearsome reputation. But straight away, it's Kathy Turner who leads. Turner leads from Daigle with Chun third. Sylvie Daigle, five times world champion. Very much the heroine of short track. Five times world champion, silver medalist in Sydney. Still at 29, a force to be reckoned with. But she seems to be struggling with the pace here set by Kathy Turner, who was 10th in the world last year in Sydney. And she really has stormed out now. And it's going to be a bit of a struggle for Daigle to hold off Lee Kyung Chun. And indeed, Daigle really struggling here. Now, this will be a sensation if she doesn't get through. Turner leads and will win. And look at that, Sylvie Daigle 
is eliminated in the heats and looks round at her friends to say what happened when well, it just looked like she had not any speed where it mattered and Kathy Turner second, goes through as the winner Chun in second well, I think Daigle really surprised by the pace set off by Turner. You can see Turner there struggling to get round that first marker. And obviously her strategy was to get in front, keep out of trouble. And really, what a disaster for the Canadian. Interesting to see elbows and arms flailing there, but it looked like it was all fair. Just about. Turner goes through. Chun with her. Daigle eliminated. And that is quite amazing. And it shows you just what could happen to even the hottest contender so now to heat number three and British interest here in Debbie Palmer there she is second from the left for Australia Felicity Campbell Julian Wang from China wearing 13 and the other Annie Perro from Canada 20 years old from Windsor in Ontario she'll wear number nine second from the right Wang on the inside then Perro then Palmer Campbell on the outside and straight into the lead goes Wang. And Debbie Palmer, I'm afraid, struggling at the back. The British champion who won the 1,000 metres in the Dutch Junior Open this season, but really struggling with this red-hot pace. Wang looking very comfortable indeed. Perro second, and the rest nowhere. Well, Wang and Perro gone off very, very fast. And uh, Debbie Palmer, I think, shocked by the... Incredible pace at the beginning of the race. So this is a cakewalk now for the 20-year-old from Heilongjiang. And she goes through no problem at all. Annie Perro doesn't bother to increase the pace. She's safely through, and I'm afraid eliminated. Felicity Campbell and the 18-year-old from Swindon, Debbie Palmer. Good experience for her. She's suddenly risen to the top of... British short track, and that will be an experience that she'll learn from. I think she was caught napping at the beginning. That's right, these girls really not wasting any time on the first lap. As we've seen in the heats from the men's competition, it's important to get out in front, get yourself out of trouble. So here we have the world champion for Canada. On the inside there, Natalie Lambert, 20 years, 28 years old from Montreal. She won the World Championships in Sydney in March and straight away, look at the power in those legs as she storms out at the front. In second place, Victoria Taranina from the unified team. Coming up on the inside, number 12 there, Yan Li from China. And the girl left behind a little bit is the Hungarian Kaz Kazala. So it's between the three of them. Up on the inside comes Lee. Lambert second. Now surely Lambert's not going to go the same way as Sylvie Daigle, but they must be worried. You can see there Lambert not taking any risks. She lets Lee go through. She knows second place is fine. At the bell, Taranina still there, and she must be worried, Lambert. No problem at the moment for Lee. Lambert second. Look at Taranina coming through. But in the end, they just hold on, although Taranina made a good burst on the outside. But Natalie Lambert, I should think, looks, and surely she does, looks very relieved indeed. She's through with Lee. That's right. Lambert got stuck behind Lee. And with the uh, Tar Taranina on the inside coming up, uh, she could well have got herself in trouble. But she goes through. Heat number five, then. Number three on the inside, Pia Pintens from Belgium. Nobuko Yamada goes for Japan, number 39. And Christina Sciola from Italy, number 34. And it's Sciola in front, but Yamada, the 20-year-old from Fukuoka, in second place. So it's pretty tough. Yamada in the lead, in second place, Pintens. This is close, but there, you can see the Italian Sciola struggling at the back, and it looks like these two have got through, and that's a bit of a shock for the Italian, who has been a big force, 26 years old from Turin, big force at the top, but these two have got away. Yamada and Pintons, no problem at all. They can coast home. They two qualify, and Sciola, I'm afraid, just one crucial mistake, and she's left out. Well, Sciola was caught napping as Pintons Sneak through on the inside, going round the bend, and Sciola tried to inject the pace, almost lost the balance, and then found herself lost six, seven metres and couldn't get back with the pace. 
So to heat number six then, Karine Rubini goes for France. She'll be wearing number 26. There you can see Oxil Huang from Korea, North Korea, number 48. Amy Peterson from the USA, number 52. And Simone Velzebeer from the Netherlands, number 46. And it's uh, Rubini who makes the start. Well, we've seen the start, very important. All the skaters anxious to get in front straight away. And straight away, it's Rubini who takes the lead, and two of them gone out. So Rubini goes through, and it looks like these two are almost certainly to go, unless some major mistakes happen. And look at that, and no wonder the French delighted they made one mistake earlier on, but it looks like Rubini's going to make it through to the quarterfinals. The 21-year-old from Montreux. Oxil Huang goes with her. And the two of them should just coast round now. There's no point in any heroics here. As they hit the bell, well, Huang trying to make a point. And she'll go through as the winner. And I'm afraid Amy Peterson and Simone Velzebeer both eliminated. And listen to the roar as Rubini crosses the line. And the first French to make the quarterfinals. But it looked as though Velzebor lost the footing and took out Peterson. We'll see it here. Velzebor on the inside there. Look, Peterson just in front of it. Velzebor goes down. And Peterson just behind. Lost the footing. Velzebor trying to get back into the race, but lost it again. And that's really cruel luck for Amy Peterson. Really cruel. And that's the sport can do that to you. Wilfred Riley knows that really well. However good you are, just one stray blade and you're out. That's right, and it's not always your fault. If the skater in front of you goes down, you find yourself in all kinds of trouble. So it's important to get out in front and keep those guys behind you. Now to one of the real new stars of the sport, Marinella Canclini, wearing 29 for Italy. There she is, straight out in front. Karen Gardner from Australia, back at in third place at the moment. Isa Kova from the United team is in second place. But this girl, just 17 years old from Bormio, has come with a fearsome reputation. And look at that, she's just carving it up at the moment. And a real battle for second place. And this really is a magnificent exhibition. 46-7-2, the record the world record by Sylvie Daigle, and the way she's going, she's going to threaten it. Gardner takes second place. But look at this from Canclini. Canclini wins, Gardner second, Isakova third. And the time very fast, 47 dead, just outside Sylvie Daigle's record. You can see there, Karen Gardner disqualified for something you didn't see on your monitor. Well, a marvellous exhibition there from Canclini. She really went out, kept herself out of trouble, and that really is the way to skate these heats. So the lineup for the last of the eight heats. Vlasova from the Soviet Union. Iola Vlasova. Monique Velzebor from the Netherlands. Joint fourth in the world. And Chun Kwa Kim from Korea, number 49. But it's Vlasova first. Velzebor, Monique Velzebor. The girlfriend of Wilfo Riley in second place. And a tremendous skater she is too. 20, 22 years old from Utada. And Velzebor in the lead from Vlasova. And it looked like Kim really struggled there and is going to be eliminated. Velzebor leads. Vlasova second. And the two of those shouldn't really have to fight it out. And Kim losing more and more ground so a comfortable entry here into the quarterfinals for these two and Velzebor goes through as does boyfriend Wilfo Riley so she's through to the quarterfinals and also through Ilya Vlasova from the United team and I'm afraid Chun Kwa Kim from North Korea misses out quarterfinals, semi-finals and final all on the same day on Saturday. Well there, Velzebor showing us her incredible turn of speed there after the second lap, just going in front of Vlasova, and those two go through easily. So what a day we've had on the opening day of the short track, and the big shot, of course, Sylvie Daigle missing out. And there are the qualifiers for the quarterfinal. 
quite amazing the Canadians will not really understand what happened there and I'm sure the uh, post-mortem will be going on long into the night but Natalie Lambert the world champion safely through and uh, I think she'll be a little worried by the skate from Canclini in that heat 7 47 dead a really fantastic time and uh, has beaten the official world record but we understand that Sylvie Daigle's time set in the pre-olympic tournament is still going to be ratified as a gold medal but the uh, discussion about that will be going long into the night Ready. so here we have uh, a chance to reprise on Canclini's amazing skate there she is straight out into the lead and in one lap she had murdered the rest of them so this is the favorite now for the ladies event by some way look at that eight ten meters clear and then relaxes a little having done the job but, you know, she really is a formidable opponent well can can Cleaney knows the danger of getting caught up with the other skaters great tactics get out in front in the first two laps get yourself a good cushion stay out of trouble and just work your way through into the final we'll see a completely different sort of race in the final I'm sure but this was great skating from Canclini and she relaxes at the end and still does 47.02 hope you've enjoyed the short track join us for the quarterfinals later on in the week breathtaking fashion is quarterfinal remember the top two through to the semis semi-finals and finals later tonight his main opposition will probably come from the fellow who's just taken the lead now Mike McMillan 27 year old 10th in the world's last year Mark Velzebor from the Netherlands in third place and going up on the outside for China a rather lucky qualifier from the quarterfinal Lian Lee the 17 year old well McMillan very tall and it's uh, the best tactic for him to get out in front and stay there the other guy's much shorter and you can see the Korean tucked in right in behind and trying to get through on the inside. Ki-Hoon Kim, who was in sensational form in his quarterfinal, just three strides, and he actually finished the race in those few seconds, just trailing McMillan at the moment. Velzebor in third place, Lee fourth, and it looks like the top two, as we thought, are beginning to get away. Velzebor beginning to struggle to stay on terms. Two laps to go. Well, Kim really doesn't need to push McMillan here. McMillan and Kim look quite comfortable in the front, and they don't want to take any risks in these quarterfinals. So they take the bell, and no point in any heroics. Kim just goes up alongside him, but it'll coast through. McMillan and Kim, the favourites, take their place in the semi-final. And I'm afraid no luck for Mark Velzebor and Leanne Lee Lee. So one quarter final still to go. And the lineup for this fourth quarter final. There's number six, Git Blanchard from Belgium, joint world bronze medalist. Mark Lackey, there he is, number 16 for Canada, 24th in the world's. Eighth in the world's rather last year, 24 years old from. Canada. Then Kawasaki from Japan, number 41, Satumo Kawasaki. Fifth in the World Championships last year, and Hugo Hernhoff for Italy. Seventh in the world, 27 years old from Bolzano. And this is a very competitive race with Blanchard probably going in as the favorite. Well, it'll be tight between Lackey and Blanchard, but you can't rule out the Japanese. Kawasaki, very, very devious competitor. And this should be a really interesting race. So Blanchard six. Ready. Lackey 16. Two on the inside of the favorites. The Italian moving alongside them in third and Kawasaki tucked in at the back. Nine laps, remember, 111 meters a lap. And tactics, if you haven't seen short track, very much at a premium. You have to keep your eyes and your wits about you the whole time. Lackey takes it at the moment. Well, impressive turn of speed there from Lackey. Slows the pace back down again. He's trying to control the race and keep himself out of trouble. And a move from Gert Blanchard into second place. So the two of them dominating from the front. In third place, Hernhoff from Italy. And at the back still, Tsutomu Kawasaki. But he's got good form. 
and should be a live threat. This should be a really close race. Lackey still leads, four to go. Blanchard nearly took a tumble there and had to push his way out of trouble. Just about legal, they're beginning to drop the last two and there Kawasaki just slid. And that has probably cost him the race. One false move here in Uragona, and I think he's gone now. First two qualifying, it's between the top three now. Lucky in front, two to go. Blanchard second, but the Italian is not out of it. Doing really well to stay in here. He was the one we thought might go for sure, but it's going to be Kawasaki out of it. Lucky first into the final lap now, and the two of them moving away, but still hand off in touch. And as they reach out, well, Blanchard and Lack Lucky certainly threw. Blanchard thinks he got it, and I think he probably did, although Hernhoff made a spirited effort at the end. Well, Hernhoff caught napping twice there. Blanchard nipped in on the inside after about two laps, and Lackey nipped round the outside of him. And uh, he'll be disappointed with his performance there, I can see. You can see how competitive this is. The guy's really leaning into the corners.